I'm Michael Lombardi and this is the Jamestown Bridge, a reef from ruins. In this video you'll learn more about the Jamestown Bridge and how through its destruction Rhode Island, the ocean state, found new life. Splitting the state, Narragansett Bay has always proved to be quite an obstacle to continuous travel. Before the bridge, North Kingston and Connecticut Island were connected by ferries. Planning for the bridge was started in 1920 due to the financial problems of the ferry companies and it was to be designed by the engineering firm Parsons, Clapp, Brinkerhoff, and Douglas. It was completed in 1940 after 18 months of work with a cost of over $3 million to build. The construction of the bridge was a massive project. The bridge stood more than 135 feet above the water and spanned almost 7,000 feet across Narragansett Bay. Even with the large scope of the project, there were no fatalities during the construction, and it remained the largest bridge in New England until 1950. During the Great Depression, the bridge created numerous jobs, and it was important during World War II for linking military bases. The last toll on the bridge was collected on June 28, 1969, to pay for its creation. Despite its many benefits, it was not going to last forever. The U.S. Coast Guard labeled the bridge as a navigation hazard due to steep slopes, slippery grading, inadequate lane width, and chunks of concrete falling into the bay. Unable to handle the growing amount of traffic and cost of maintenance led to planning for a new Jamestown Bridge in 1985. A number of ideas circulated about what to do with the old bridge. It was proposed as a walking trail and even as a fishing pier. In the end, all these ideas were scrapped because its condition was so poor. One other very creative idea was offering it to Hollywood to blow up if they were willing to pay demolition costs. But ultimately it was decided that the steel would be recycled and the concrete would be used to create artificial reefs. The detonation of the main span took place on April 18, 2006. Demolition debris was strategically placed at two offshore sites. The first, Gooseberry Island, is located one and a half miles south of Newport. Sheep Point, the second site, is a quarter mile to the east. The newly created reef sites provide both long and short term refuge for marine life, including species of commercial interest such as lobster, tatog, and seasonal visitors such as striped bass. A variety of research is conducted on animals collected from the reefs. Monthly, specimens are collected by a team of scientific divers. Animals including bryozoans, mollusks, other invertebrates, and various small fish are preserved and archived. Ongoing laboratory studies help us understand how the reef's population changes over time. Lab investigations are carried out by the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management and students from several local colleges and universities. We filled each artificial reef unit with a wire cage, PVC pipe, corrugated fiberglass sheets, and 150 surf clam shells. And we've already gone through these shells and removed all the marine or organisms that we can, but there's encrusting growth that we can't remove. And on these shells, we're going to be determining the percent cover of the growth of this species, which is a bryozoan. And to do that, we just lay a grid over the top of it and count the number of squares that has the bryozoan in it. And we're determining the percent cover of all the organisms encrusting growth on their experimental reef units for the entire unit. So this is just one piece of the entire unit that we're determining uh, the percent cover for. Within the artificial reef units, we've had a number of invertebrate species. In particular, we've had two species of mussel. This here are the, uh, the blue mussels. We've had quite a bit of those colonizing the units. We've also had um, a lot of colonization by hydroids, which is in this jar here, as well as numerous tunicate species. This here is called Siona intestinalis, and this is one of our main tunicate species colonizing the units. Uh, we've also had starfish and five different species of crabs.
Ultimately, the Rhode Island Department of Transportation was responsible for finding a location to place the bridge debris and chose two nearshore Rhode Island Sound sites to place the concrete deck slabs and the concrete rubble. The Rhode Island Department of Environment is responsible for monitoring these sites for up to five years. And for the last few years, I've been studying the reefs as part of my master's program at the University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography and have teamed with the Department of Environmental Management for this effort. In order for the reef to advance, uh, fishing, commercial fishing, sport fishing, uh, anything that takes away from the reef it needs to be limited. Um, and uh, what we found is uh, a lot of the debris that was deposited on the reef uh, contained a lot of rebar uh, and uh, metal and, and what and created a, a hazardous place for fishing, for scuba divers. Um, uh, really, it, it just it created a uh, very protective zone for the fish um, and uh, other marine life. The artificial reefs have experienced a great deal of colonization by both marine invertebrates and fish species. We have seen a number of tunicates, mussels, sea stars, barnacles, hydroids, and lobsters, as well as num numerous fish species such as cunner, scup, black sea bass, and tatog. With the technologies that we used on this job, pretty much we, we did everything with surface applied divers, and uh, the purpose behind that was to get uh, our information, our data in real time so that we could make on the spot corrections and, uh, and, and get as much as we could in as little time. Um, and the purpose of that and the reason for that is, uh, is the most difficult part of this is just anchoring on site and, uh, and, and the, just the staging of being on site. It, you, you're constrained by weather and, and uh, other atmospheric conditions. At the time of their creation, Rhode Island, Rhode Island was the first state in New England to create marine artificial reefs under a formal plan. The concrete used to create these reefs have been shown to be a suitable reef building material because they provide a hard substrate for the attachment of marine and cresting growth. Artificial reefs enhance the natural marine environment by providing habitat complexity, a refuge for juvenile fish and other organisms, and a food source for other species. Continued research of Rhode Island's artificial reefs is the product of state, private, and nonprofit collaborators. To learn more about this project and how to get involved, please visit www.oceanopportunity.com.